Hey, welcome back to Q&A Friday. This week I'm going to answer a question that I get asked quite a lot, and that is, when you're working with intuitive or mindful eating, one of the principles is to allow yourself to eat whatever you want to eat. The idea is, when you allow yourself to eat whatever you want, you no longer get that sense of deprivation. And the question that came to me was one I get asked all the time. The question is essentially, I am afraid to allow myself to eat whatever I want to eat because I'm afraid if I do, I'm going to eat everything in sight. And I hear this all the time. Um, the question then went on to say, you know, what do I do with that? How can I trust that I won't? And what I want to talk about is a couple of the principles behind why this is happening, why you feel this way. And I also want to address why it's actually okay to allow yourself to do that because you have to believe that it's going to be okay before you're going to be willing to jump off that diving board you know um, you're not going to go into the deep end if you don't know that you can swim so I'm going to break this into two sessions actually because I think that each of the concepts have um, enough meat that I could probably talk about each of them in one video so stay tuned for part two which I'm going to upload hopefully within the next week or two the first part that I want to talk about to you is the, what I call deprivation syndrome. And deprivation syndrome is actually a term that I didn't coin, but it, it's a term that speaks to what happens when you take something, in this case food, away. So the studies are actually based on animal studies, and what they've shown is that if you have lab rats and they're being fed a certain amount of food and they're accustomed to that, and then all of a sudden you take away their food for a period of time, if you place the food back in front of the animal, across the board, they're going to eat that food exponentially. So that's kind of like saying that they're going to binge on it. And what happens when you've been dieting and restricting your food or restricting your calorie intake, trying to lose weight for a long period of time, which most of us that have been on a diet most of our lives, and if you're watching this video and if you're following me, chances are you have some experience with that. Um, what's happened is, is you've kind of done that to yourself. You've created the deprivation syndrome because what happens is, over time, you're looking at food as something you cannot eat. I shouldn't have that. Oh, that's bad food. Oh, I really shouldn't. Every time you probably go to eat something, you're counting the calories. You're thinking about what you can't eat. Your your mind is focused on the lack of food and the 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 amount that you don't want to take in. And so because of that, your focus is always on lack. And the deprivation syndrome kicks in because what happens is after time, you start seeing food as something that is limited, that there's a limited amount. And so when food is actually allowed and you have the ability to eat it, the deprivation syndrome espouses that you're going to want to eat twice as much. And, you know, we don't even have to talk about this in clinical terms to really understand it. The hungrier you get, the more you want to eat. And anyone who's ever been on a diet, especially a really restrictive diet, knows it makes you hungry. You go around looking at food, and all you think about is wishing you could eat it, wanting to eat it, but you can't. And so that's where this feeling is coming from. Um, and I want to just enforce that what happens with deprivation syndrome is the more you deprive, the more the urge to eat intensifies. And so when I encourage my clients to go ahead and give themselves, psychologically give themselves permission to eat whatever they want, the fear, the letting go of that, causes them to want to hold on to the restriction even more. You know, the response is internally like, no, I can't let go, no, no, because I'll eat everything in sight and that, that's not going to be okay. And that just causes them to want to then restrict and hold on even tighter to that control that they feel they have over food, which only intensifies the deprivation feeling, which intensifies the hunger. So you see how it builds um, what you're doing by dieting and restricting is actually building that hunger. And the more you hold on to that, the more you're going to want to eat. So the only way to get out of that trap, the only way is to trust that if you let go, you're going to be able to manage what, you, what shows up. And I tell clients, I can't predict your future. Is it possible that if you give yourself permission to eat, you may overeat or you may make bad choices? Bad, of course, is not a word I like to use when I talk about food, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, yeah, it is. You may find yourself eating more than one Reese's peanut butter cup. It may happen that you do overeat, at least initially. But what happens, and this is the really cool part, is once you've given in to that urge, you're no longer 
feeling deprived. In fact, oftentimes, you'll actually start to feel like you don't want as much food because, you know, anybody who's ever eaten too much food knows afterwards you're usually left with this feeling of, oh, I, you know, I couldn't eat another bite or I really don't ever want to do that again. And what happens with binging um, is that typically people go right back into that deprivation syndrome. So they'll say, oh, I never want to do that again. So they go right back to the other end of the spectrum and they deprive themselves of food, which then lends itself to that next binge. But if you should let go, if you should give yourself permission, and you should find that you do binge, which may not happen, but if it does, resist the urge to go back into that restrictive mode. Because if you do, you're just going to set yourself up to go into another binge. Once that happens, listen to your body's response. It doesn't want to do that again. Going into the middle of the spectrum, which is the balance piece, is a natural place to be. You see, once you give yourself permission to eat, then likely your natural palate will show up. You're not going to want to eat. You're not going to have that intense hunger that drives so many people into that binging cycle. And that is something that naturally will occur. But you have to be willing to let go. You have to be willing to let go of the diet, let go of the restrictions, let go of the you know, calorie counting that, that leads into that sort of obsessive thinking. I'm not saying you can't count calories, but you know the difference you're out there, the difference between paying attention mindfully and being obsessed with the numbers. So anything that is intense over here will lead to an intense response over here. And what you want to do is trust that, you know, you let go and maybe you do come over here, but you're going to swing back to the middle. The key is not to go back, not to go back into the restrictive place. And as you can see, I'm sort of doing this motion as I talk about this. And what that is going to actually lend itself to is part two, which is going to be talking about what I call the pendulum swing effect. And it really speaks to the, what we're talking about now. But um, it's another way of looking at this cycle and another way of kind of giving yourself an image or a metaphor to figuring out how to break it. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll know when I post it. And um, if you have any other questions, obviously keep them coming. I am happy to answer them. Of course, all questions get answered anonymously. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.